old pond. Frog jumps in water. Is it beautiful? This is one of the most famous haiku poems which has been translated into English. It's by a guy called Basho. And you might imagine something is lost in the translation, but this idea of something very simple leading to a profound artistic expression is in a lot of Japanese arts. So let's take a look at some traditional arts today and the influence behind them. Ultimately, this lecture will lead to a promotion of tea ceremony, which is, for me, the most interesting expression of an art through doing... drinking tea. Uh, it's maybe hard for many people <laughs> to get. Even young Japanese people might think it's a silly thing, but let me try to explain why the serving and drinking of tea includes everything of the Japanese artistic spirit. Here we go. This uh, character called Do or Michi is in many Japanese traditional arts. Literally, it means the way or road. Now, this uh, is in the word for tea ceremony as sado, kado is flower arrangement, shodo is calligraphy, kendo is Japanese fencing, judo is judo, and aikido is aikido. Now, saying that all of these things have the root, road, or way is not something many Japanese people think about, but it it's kind of like in English. We have the term martial arts to describe things like karate or any kind of uh, fighting, you know, that, that uh, you do. It's martial art. Well, actually, the word martial comes from Mars, the god of war. And so it means Mars-like art. Okay? So probably most people who are doing karate are not thinking about the god of war while they are doing it. But in today's lecture, I want to give you some of the historical background for what influences this stuff. I'm not saying that this is on the front of everybody's mind who's doing this. But let's look for some more themes. People would agree about this. Elegance and simplicity are in the heart of many things Japanese. In my three-meter bamboo hut this spring, there is nothing. There is everything. That's good. I can get that one. I can feel that one. The empty space is only as empty as your imagination or feeling. The you might see a Japanese painted screen door that is three-quarters clouds. And when you first come over, you think the artist was just lazy. Thought he would save some paint, maybe, and just keep all of this part white here and, and have a little bit of a tree with some crows about here. Yeah, but the, the use of space and spacing is so vital to Japanese arts. You know, a, a traditional Japanese music didn't really have a, a meter, like do, 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 do. That's like 4-4 four, four rhythm. I don't know how they did it, but they just kind of felt it. Yeah, I, I can't actually appreciate it very much, but look it up. It's something called gagaku, gagaku. I don't get it, but it's on YouTube. It's really fair to say Zen uh, influences uh, quite a few things, although uh, we can't really know how profoundly Zen shaped the arts or um, 
they just mutually arose because Zen is a part of the Japanese experience in general. So it's natural that it's in the arts as well. But one idea of Zen is that the action is more important than the result or the conclusion. The act of doing something is already the, the point. So, if you believe these people who practice Kyudo, which is Japanese archery, the act of taking out the, the, the arrow, putting it into your bow, and looking, and letting go, is, is 90% of it, and whether you hit the target or not is a minor point. You want to hit the target, yes, but if you have great form and you miss the target, that's okay. Kind of, because actually, if you do have great form, if your form is perfect, then you are, it's a foregone conclusion that you will hit the target. So actually, the, the focus in Japanese arts tends to be from the very start. How do you sit down? How do you pick up your instrument? How do you even breathe? Everything important starts from the first second, and, and that first part is just as important as the last second. This is really Zen. Maybe another part is dedication. So, this is a bit of an idealized quote, but it's, it's nice. Talking about the traditional Japanese gardens. And especially this means the great gardens of old Kyoto. Every weed that threatens the delicate moss is plucked by hand by the gardener who created the space, thereby taking responsibility for its maintenance for the rest of his life. So, if that's true, you better believe he thinks all of his actions from start to finish are important. High school students are quite serious sometimes in Japan. So in this picture they're performing on the koto, a 13-stringed instrument. Seems quite difficult to me. This is not a major thing that people do, but the act of practicing five, six, even seven days a week in high school on your art or club is a major part of the culture. This is the dedication part of the arts. At a high school and junior high that I worked at before, this school was one of the top in the prefecture of Hokkaido, the state of Hokkaido. It was number one in sports like basketball, badminton, and it was very high in tennis and rhythmic gymnastics. Okay, this was an all-girls school. And I don't know, even know if you will believe me if you haven't lived in the country. You might not believe me, but Try to. I, I, these girls would practice their sport 340 days a year, and that's kind of why they were number one. And that also means that their coaches are attending practice 340 days or more a year. Multiple coaches, not just one. <laughs> so when you, when you say you're going to do something, artistic or even especially as part of a team in this country, you're going to do it. That's the dedication factor. What's another element we can talk about is a mysterious sort of untouchable element. So we, we may use the word erythreal, ethereal. One part of the arts is focusing on the unseen or untouchable. One of the famous temples in Kyoto is called Ryoanji. And this rock garden, you maybe have heard about it. It's pretty popular in, uh, f in foreign countries, and literature and so on. 
One of the ideas of this place is that it's impossible to see all of the 15 strategically placed rocks, uh, large rocks here. You can't see all 15 at the same time. In fact, you can't get a photograph of all of the rocks unless you stand on a wall or use a helicopter. But that's very much cheating. Don't do it. That's not the point. The point is to, is to take in everything without being able to see it all. It's a very big garden. So when you sit right next to it, 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 it mostly extends out of your field of vision. And take a look at the walls here. They, they're meant to look this way. They're not supposed to be painted with beautiful colors, but you are supposed to be able to enjoy the natural, I almost said decay, but maybe that's not polite. I don't know what word to use. The natural aging, we should say, of these walls over the 500 years. They are deliberately let to age, although it, it's directed. I shouldn't say that, that this is not taken care of, because, of course, this is wood in a very wet country. You, you have to wash this stuff. But again, that's kind of practical. The, the arts in Japan are simple, direct, and practical. If you have a lot of paint in a very humid environment, it doesn't usually last very long. So it's practical to make yourself enjoy simple wood. And as uh, Alan Watts has said, wood never makes an aesthetic mistake. The aesthetics of the wood patterns are just always beautiful if you take some time to appreciate it. This is all part of tea ceremony. Okay, I'm not going to claim to understand this, but I'm just trying to pass this on to you. I've been to some tea ceremony. It's nice. I tried my best, <laughs> but it includes everything. Um, for this server, for her part, um, it's not always a woman, sorry, but it was actually founded by a man, but these days uh, it seems to be women that are more into it. It's uh, aesthetically simple and pleasing. The, the preparer of the tea is also supposed to prepare a small seasonal dish of sweets, which should match the atmosphere of the seasonal flowers which they selected to put in the room. The room should be very simple, always a tatami room. This is also athletic. It's not easy to, to move uh, gracefully in a kimono, actually. Your legs are quite tight together. And if you're not careful, you're going to do a penguin walk. <laughs> and that's not very nice. So they have uh, a lot of training to actually shuffle their feet in a very cool way that makes a, a pleasant sound on the tatami, if you are able to appreciate that kind of thing. <laughs> anyway, and to see the person, at least I can appreciate this, to, to see the person getting up, standing, it's, it's so smooth quiet, and the, even the sound of the kimono, uh, you, you got the idea, is quite nice if you can put your mind in the right place. That's the, the part of the, of the performer. The performer is also supposed to create a serene and very calm environment. Now, the participant is also called to join. The participant should make some kind of comment about the sweets, or how nice the tea is, or how you enjoy the bitterness of the tea. Yeah, for those who don't know, it's very bitter, it stains your teeth green, and that's a good thing, okay? <laughs> it is, it is, if, if you just try it. And you have to make a, a conversation but it has to be natural, 
zen-like and fitting with the emotion of the room. So this is tea ceremony sado, the way of tea. It's a mystery, but it's something that I'd like to understand. I, I don't plan to ever perform it, but to be a good participant means it's my chance to also do a Japanese traditional art without doing something six days a week. Let's do it together. I'll see you next week.